It's the 24th of January, 2020, live from the New Vision Studios at exactly 9 p.m. A good evening to you all. My name is Ndagire Leila. Yellow fever confirmed in West Nile and Hoima region. The Ministry of Health has confirmed four cases of yellow fever outbreak in Moyo and Bulisa district. In Moyo district, contacted persons are suspected to have contaminated the virus from South Sudan since they deal in the selling of timber in Juba. Whereas a couple in Bolisa is believed to have got the virus from the Democratic Republic of Congo, where they sell their milk. We have a report. While addressing a joint news conference with officials from the World Health Organization at the Ministry of Health headquarters, Health Minister Dr. Jane Rutha Chang said laboratory tests confirmed four cases after they were reported from the two districts. Confirmation of an outbreak of yellow fever in Moyo district in West Nile region and Bolisa district in Hoima region. In Moyo district, there are two confirmed cases. Both are males aged 18 and 21 years. The minister says they are working with World Health Organization to start vaccinating people in the affected districts within two weeks after receiving the vaccines. With guidance from the World Health Organization. And we designed a card adopted from the international card which has a Ugandan emblem. That was one step. The second step is that all these cards are printed from the same place and they have a serial number. And the serial number continues. The third is that for whoever is vaccinated, the card must have the batch number of the vaccine. She has, however, cautioned the public to take extra care of their lives. The population are advised to always sleep under a mosquito net and report any suspected cases to the nearest health facility. In conclusion, the Ministry of Health re-echoes its call to the general public to cooperate with officials during the investigations and response to the outbreaks. Yellow fever is a disease transmitted through bites of mosquitoes infected with the yellow fever virus and has symptoms that include high fever, headache, jaundice, muscle pain, nausea, vomiting and fatigue, and yellow discoloration of skin and or eyes, according to the World Health Organization. For people who get infected with the disease develop severe symptoms. Approximately half of those who acquire the symptoms die within 7 to 10 days of being infected. All Ugandans have been advised to sleep under an insecticide treated mosquito net and also get vaccinated as preventive measures to keep safe from the disease. On average, the cost of the vaccine on the open market is 80,000 shillings. It's very important to be cautious. Meanwhile, Deputy Chief Justice Alfonso Owinidolo and Katurebe disagreed on the retirement age of judges. The Chief Justice Katurebe and Deputy Chief Justice Alfonso Owinidolo disagreed on the retirement age of judges. This all started when Owinidolo tasked the parliament to review the judge's retirement age of 65, saying it is a waste. Farouk Kasule compiled the report. Owinyi Dolo said, although it is good to retire, it is a waste to ask any judicial officer to retire at the age of 65. It is like to ask the best surgeon to go back home to do poultry at the age of 65. If it was parliament, the 65 years should be for magistrates. However, Bart Katerebe disagreed with Owinyi Dolo, saying the concept of retirement should not be when someone is about to die. Katurebe said, if you allow a judge who is about to retire and his retirement benefits a little to come back on the bench, what deals will he or she be making? I think it is better to retire early. Meanwhile, the outgoing principal judge, Dr. Irukamba Mwine, today formally handed over office to his predecessor, Dr. Flavian Zeja. In a ceremony presided over by Chief Justice Bat Katurebe at Kampala High Court, Bamwine said, I'm here to perform a noble task of handover to my successor. I have done my best and it is time to hand over office to you. And also new servants to take over. Lord, you are a good Lord, 
we are going to touch them is our prayer that your omnipotency and omniscience. On December 25th last year, Bamwini clocked retirement age of 65 and was replaced by the 50-year-old Zaja. Zaja was formerly a resident judge of Mbara. Katero told Zaja to be ready to adjudicate matters just like him at the Supreme Court. In his handover report, Bamwini pointed out a number of reforms which he has spearheaded for the last 10 years. They include plea bargaining, small claims procedures, sentencing guidelines, and special court sessions that have been instrumental in the delivery of justice. Bamwini said for the first time, convicts outnumber those on remand because they have a number of people dealt with at 52% and detainees at 47%. Bamwine tasked Zaja to ensure zero tolerance to corruption among judges, noting that some judges tend to delay delivery of judgment. Bamwine said there's need to take justice to people. He implored Zaja to give much attention to sexual and gender-based violence-related cases, noting that most of the people on remand are on defilement and indecent assault-related charges. Bamwine lauded President Museveni for entrusting him with the office and urged Zaja to keep sanity, saying the office he has assumed is very tempting. Bamwine started off as a grade one magistrate in 1983 before rising through the ranks to become principal judge in 2010. Story by Farouk Kasule for New Vision TV. And I promise that I will do that as a duty. It's not an option as a duty to make sure that the judiciary delivers on her mandate. Thank you so much, Farouk, for that report. Millennium Development Goals require that children have a right to survival, to develop to the fullest, to protection from harmful influences, abuse and exploitation, as well as participate fully in family, culture and social life. Now, the government has to fund organizations that look after children in that look after children with parents in prison if it's to achieve its millennium development goals. This was said by Francis Suri, the founder of Wells of Hope Ministries, during the visit of the School of Wells of Hope, located at Chajinga Village in Nakaseke district. Petride Modola has a report. Research conducted by Wells of Hope Ministries, a non-government organization that looks after inmates' children, reveals that over 2,000 children of prisoners do not attend school due to lack of tuition. Suvi said children with a parent in prison are completely innocent and yet are being cruelly punished by a criminal justice system which is blind to their needs even when parental incarceration has great damages to the children compared to their parents. Subi added that despite the significant impact the imprisonment of parents can have on children, the views and best interests of children are rarely considered by the criminal justice system. As a result, kids find challenges getting support. Parental incarceration is more traumatic to children with a parent in prison than even a parent's death or divorce and the damage is caused to the student's education health and social relationships greatly affects them so we pointed out despite that the most widely ratified treaty spells out the basic rights of children government has not done enough to ensure that children with a parent in prison are universally accepted and realized. He notes that children of orphaned by AIDS are abandoned by society, several of which have died from preventable diseases. The rights of these marginalized and forgotten children need to be our highest priority if we really want to achieve the social and economic goals Subi recommended. Children of incarcerated parents have higher rates of attention deficits than those with parents missing due to death or divorce. Therefore, should be at the center of decision making, not an afterthought to be recommended. In reference to the 2000 Millennium Development Goals, the Global Convention promised that by 2015, all girls and boys will be in school, that the spread of AIDS will be reversed, that poverty and hunger will no longer affect more than a billion people. The generation that will hold us accountable to these promises is already here. 
The United Nations Millennium Declaration, signed in September 2000, commits world leaders to combat poverty, hunger, disease, illiteracy, environmental degradation, and discrimination against women. A lot needs to be done to ensure that children's rights are universally accepted and realized. So we further advised government. Frank Bene, the prison's public relations officer, noted that the law permits children under the age of 18 months to join their mothers in prison, but when an infant reaches the age of 18 months, the child is placed with a relative or family friend willing and able to provide support. Bene, however, explains that when the relative or family friend is not willing to take care of the prisoner's child or children, with the consent of the parent, the infant is placed under the care of a child welfare institution. With support from both local and international funders, Wells of Hope schools were established to provide free primary and secondary education for children with parents in prison. The school currently accommodates a total of 158 children, of whom 66 are boys and 92 girls. Story compiled by Patrick Mudola for New Vision TV. When I'm happy, I dance like this. Let's go in for a short commercial break and we return with business. Welcome back from that short commercial break. Thank you very much for tuning in and being live. So we're going to see what's happening in the world of business. In business tonight, the Editor General John Mwanga has named Bank of Uganda as the most loss-making government entity in 2019. This is contained in the annual report of the Editor General, noting that compared to the previous year, 13 enterprises posted improved performance, whereby they reduced on their losses while others increased on their profits. According to the report, Bank of Uganda made losses of 855 billion shillings from 424 billion shillings profits they recorded in 2018. Uganda Development Corporation made losses of 17 billion shillings, while Kilembe made losses of 2 billion shillings. The report also recognizes Uganda National Water and Sewage Corporation as the most profit-making state enterprise with 85.7 billion shillings. Uganda Electricity Transmission Company Limited 64.6 .6 billion shillings and Civil Aviation Authority making 45.5 billion shillings. <laughs> More small and medium enterprises in Uganda are being frustrated due to a decline in business activities in January 2020. According to a survey called the SME Optimism Index by the Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises Uganda, business optimism fell by 3.5% to 101% in January 2020 from 104.5% registered in January 2019. The SME Optimism Index Index is an indication of the health of the SME sector in Uganda. The index is released in the first month of every quarter, considering six index components like sales and profits, employment, selling prices and inflation, borrowing costs, interest rates, order book positions, and the expected overall economic growth. The executive director, Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises, Uganda, John Walugembe, said that the negative business views can be attributed to a decrease in money circulation normally experienced in January up to March as most overspend in December and also reserve most of their money for school fees, which leaves other businesses like entertainment, hospitality and general trading with less activities. He urged government to put in place policies or projects that will ensure that there's enough money in circulation among the people. In our special report, as we approach the NRA government celebrations, the New Vision TV continues to unfold the different series of the untold stories of the Bush War. In the third and last series, Biamunungu narrates how the president survived death at Birembo. Barbara Nyamuiza has the details. <music> Thank you.
You have heard the story of Virembo, the place at which the president and his bodyguard were shot at as they approached Kabamba as part of their moves and movements of the liberation of this country. The series are going on and we are telling you the untold stories of the NRM's liberation war. Matayo Biamnugo narrated to us in our first episode and we'll bring you much more as we go on. Bilibit <laughs> Abasai jabo la wako chumbe emele watajirie Etaliwe Omusai jabo la muzi muzi mkuru Mkuru wa ito mkuru wa ruha kutifuga wile vuna Na muzika ali presidenti Jafuna anu mfuko wa ito Mwasenga wange e, Zikazi sanka ikumine kichweko Nizigwenda weba jemuna wawo Aha Ini murora wa ito mune mundu Tuli ya ali ya ali Nagama mutaruga wakubanga Bote wa itiraga musawandu Hatu waga mbaga kuhiru kwa kizi wiki Nini nywe Nini kuhiru kwa Nini nywe Batu kuhiga Nikuwa kugambi yonu tinamuchia Tuka firma wa ntume yitu Omuli ngombo Avo kuhiru kwa Ito munu tukatu hine visoro Bete nkove Zaivage emero mumisiri gia wa Ntina hika mare ewichi Iviri itakali yaga mwogu wa munu Obo nye nye uchuro obo mwuri Obo uchuro obo Na Bobo bukan mara, omuzi mara bobo tak kucur buanya cia karo. Abu amasa. Abu amasa sah. Omu kuno nak garu kirim kuete garis ambal yara vire, visi vio ni yara iro. Ira bo ira nu enak enak akai jawi yara ro vire embo. Ya ya ija kutu bungira, ya ija yara ro wa teken ni kuiran ya jombe kiri teken ni kuya mani. Muka kamu ini mesti kamu tu nih cina nara nara bungkiran nara. Hmm, ayu nengiri yara ro muri bobo bukik siri kalian dosa. Aku kali ramu ramu randi la, ramu randi aku guru kira nka, ramu tama gun, ramu tigun. Ata ikal irat, woi kal iran. Eh, ramu kure bodyguard dia kau woi kal irat. Nau woi ikal. Aye, woi kal ya bagor kambos, balin deh beri ya aku kuarat. Kuyal. Ati ya genaga kuhuli la. Eh, moon dia kalu gamai mai ramu sanju. Eh, katero ramu tigun, na iguru na mataji agan dia kalu gai guru kuga guans. Ati wabu mazi kutere mungu dete ilaji uli hile. Eskoti ya gwale ya kaba alinuwe ya guwile ya munaji ya fuera wu. Ati wabu mungu mazi kutere wa eskoti wu gwa iwa ya roa wu. Ibu waka yuka na tamu mutamu na wera mba. Chitulichi nkwole kese ya gachini. Yechi. Ya tamu mundo kuo. Okusoka kasoka ya teka kwa mkuru wakano ekiju kizo kinu. Amazi ya kuwa angura. Nchitu wa yambiri wa mungu mungu. Meru kani chitu chikuru nchiki teka mungu. Ati waka wani wali wata wata kufunda meru. Msaja matia na waka yamba munu kubanga waka laromu na wu ya bae uja ambi wu hindi. Matia wakuli waka nyakaramu nuku vieta nyakaramu. Nuno kuru ganovu. Aija wuli mwaka. Wuli mwaka nene? Eee, wakuli afu nileki aruwa aswa kuwa gana wanyi vijuku za tikiriki mchi honga. Baiti chua chigenda wuli hiju. Aija mu wuli hiju wuli mwaka. Ebilo muende wa chumanyilo vila iku mini. Wabuzi bukani uja kwa rachi. Kuru waka na uja kufua. Ilabu wa ija. Anu. Ayo nyumiza wa mtu kwa bea asenyuka muno. Kuru angu waka sigarafu. Nye watu ya ansabi leku bamaze kuangula. Banya bamaze leku kuangula. Ayenda kuteka iwali ni nkwolekezi ni yoku wandalini. Hati ama lili iza liteka wa maza kusimbe miti ya jato. Wangere chintu chinda amaze kurongo saye. Hati wa malize hivili kona ikumina munana. Kande yeroza kumuye yukuli. Amuombekele njiwe ikalire mwye kuro lene ya kitu lene. Hati ukuru ganovu na ijuwe la kaija ya izile kuja kura wa mkuru wa mbaya la vile. Ila mba njina mbaya tadikiro kuwe na nkaru wenu nkaru wena ija na kura chini. Yeji yetu ikamu kunu. Nyomu kamu wangu ya miyake sati jiwe ilo. Akabaru kalu kuro lele la wana. Nyomu kamu wangu ya miyake sati jiwe ilo. Nyomu ilo wangu kasanga. Nindole ilo na bani na gomete kuro lele. Vetu kani na suwaza wiki tuweka kini kita kunyiri la. Hati nyata ni kuro lele la wana bakabata ilo umu takura wu. Batu kwa manjiri vio vio yawa antu wabichi na ikaro wiki sugu ataka kunyiri la kwa nini ndoa nte kijiko cha presidenti wa itukini tishikuta kwa kwa nchi kora chini kita kunyia na tandiko 
kukorao. This brings us to the end of our episodes of the untold story of the Bush War as we commemorate the NRM's Liberation Day this year. The NRM and all the comrades that it has had have gone through a lot and all the people that struggled to have this country more peaceful had to go, had, had to go through such and a lot more as our people have narrated. For New Vision TV, my name is Barbara Nyamwiza. <music>Thank you so much, Barbara Nyamweza, for that report. The third topmost political organ of the ruling political party, National Resistance Movement, Central Executive Committee, today discussed the proposed amendments in the party constitution, adopting lining up as a mode of voting in the internal NRM elections. Let's see what transpired in the meeting. Let's dance, let's dance. The meeting, which was presided over by President Museveni, who is also NRM National Chairman, was held in Entebbe. The Central Executive Committee comprises of the National Chairperson, the First National Vice Chairperson, Second National Vice Chairperson, six Vice Chairpersons representing the regions of Uganda, including the East, Central, and Northern, including the West, Kampala, and Karamoja. The Secretary General, National Treasurer, Deputy Secretary General, Deputy National Treasurer, Chairperson of the NRM Parliamentary Caucus, all Chairpersons of the NRM Special League Committees, Chairpersons of the Commission and any number of Secretaries, as determined by the NEC, the model was first adopted by the same organ in February last year during a retreat at Chowe Safari Lodge in Noya District, where members agreed that all internal party elections be conducted by lining up, including for those of members of parliament. The resolution was later in March adopted by the NRM Parliamentary Caucus in their retreat in Chankwanzi. Rogers Mulindwa said the NRM Secretariat, the Central Executive Committee members today noted that queuing up will help in reducing logistical and financial costs. He said there will be no procurement of ballot papers, buckets, indelible blink, pens and basins, among other electoral materials. He said it will also provide for a desirable party cohesion due to transparency and that it would also deal with the issue of multiple voting. The Central Executive Committee also fronted reduction on temptations of election manipulation and commercialization of politics, as well as reducing administrative costs the party has been grappling with as a basis for the need to have amendment affected. The previous NRM primaries were characterized by cases of delays in production, packing and transportation of huge volumes of election material and according to the Central Executive Committee, queuing up will cure these challenges which in some lead to election postponement. Many members of the NRM in the previous primaries disagreed with the outcome of the polls and sought redress in courts of law citing election malpractices like ballot staffing and swapping of results by election managers. Melinda said the Central Executive Committee is convinced that when the model of lining up is adopted, all this will be eliminated. The resolution is now going to be presented to the second topmost organ, the National Executive Council, sitting today in Entebbe, and the party topmost policy organ, National Conference on Saturday at Mandela National Stadium for consideration. <laughs> If approved by the National Executive Committee and the National Conference, Mulindwa says the Secretariat will proceed and generate appropriate and enabling election materials that will include voter education literature. Now in sports, the Crested Cranes under-17 women national team is set to face Ethiopia on Sunday in the return leg in Baherda, Ethiopia. The team is to fly to Ethiopia at the wee hour. Patricia Turaheba has the report. <laughs> the Uganda under-17 national women team coach Ayub Khalifa Chiinji says his side needs to improve on their efficiency in the final third as they take on Ethiopia. The two sides meet in the preliminary round return leg of the 2020 FIFA Under-17 Women World Cup qualifiers this Sunday in Bahel Dar. We have had our last 
I would say a friendly game. It has been a very good build up game where we have uh, tested all the players, looking at their speed, the speed was just very okay, the attitude very positive and uh, I think we are ready to go. Kali expressed this concern over his team's striking force during the last training. Yesterday, before the team travelled to Baelda in the wee hours of Friday morning, the Crested Cranes aged Ethiopia by 2-0 at Lugogo in the first leg play two weeks ago, courtesy of Juliet Nalukenge and second-half substitute Catherine Nagadia. The winner between Uganda and Ethiopia will face Tanzania or Burundi in the next stage. Tanzania aged Burundi 5-1 in the first leg. A total of 16 teams from six confederations in November 2021 will camp in India for the championship that will be in its seventh edition. Spain is the defending champion, having defeated Mexico 2 1 in the final last year. Story by Patricia Tiriahewa. <laughs> This brings us to the end of tonight's bulletin, but if you want to get more insight and detail about the news, visit our social media platforms. Have a good night. Let's see what's taking place in the fact file.